Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we scour YouTube for 10 of the best hands from poker vloggers far and wide. In this week's episode, we've got Calculating the Odds, we've got Poker at the Kitchen Table, and we have a hand where losing really does feel like winning. Let's make a start. At number 10, our boy Ethan, Rampage Poker, is playing at the Hustler in California in a 10-20 cash game. And in this massive $20,000 pot, it is Vlogger versus Vlogger. Right off the bat, finding some action. We're playing five-handed. I'm in early position with King-8 of spades. I raise it up to $120 with a $40 straddle on. The big one player with the big stack makes the call, and Mariano to my right in the straddle calls as well. We're going three ways to a flop in position of King-10-8, two hearts and a diamond. Action checks to me, and I'm thinking this is a huge bink. With the very disguised two pair on a draw-heavy board, I decided to bet big to $300. And as if life wasn't already so great with two pair, the big blind decides to put more money in the middle and check raises to $800. This is what dreams are made of here, as the big one player might be happy to commit stacks. But then also, actions onto Mariano, and he thinks for a long time, and then ends up making the call for 800. Really surprised by this action, and also at the same time, very confused. So much action going on, I'm in position, and I have to expect that my two pair here has to be good, unless I'm up against king 10 or pocket tens so with all this money in the middle and a lot of draws to be had on this board i decide to raise again put in a three bet on this flop and size to 2600 the big blind folds quickly unfortunately so we're not going to get action from him but back onto mariana who committed 800 dollars calling his raise after a little bit of thinking he ends up making the call so really big pot brewing now and will this be the first really big pot we play against each other Time to find out with already six to $7,000 in the middle. The turn is the five of diamonds. Brings in another flush draw on the board and Mario has about 7,500 in his stack. End of the day, the plan is simple and it's to get it all in by the river. Although there are a ton of draws that could be had here, I don't want to scare away those draws. I want to bet small enough where I can bet turn, then go all in river, like I said. So I size up to $2,200 and Mariano doesn't take too long before doing the all-in himself. He check jams. I ask for a count, but I'm obviously not folding my two pair here. It's about $7,600 total. And yeah, I'm in here. I make the call playing a massive pot against our buddy. I show my king eight, and we agree to run it twice. Looking like I'm ahead here, the run out comes pretty clean. Mariano mucks. And just like that, we win over a $20,000 pot against our buddy. Not sure what he had. I think later he told me he had 10-8 for flopped bottom two pair. And this seems to be just a cooler. At number nine, it's Harry B playing at the Seminole in Coconut Creek, Florida in a 2-5 game. And does anyone know the actual odds of this happening? Tell us in the comments. In the last hand of the night, we looked down at two red aces under the gun. Let's go. It's about freaking time we get a hand. I open up the action to $20. We see a call from the cutoff, and now the button blesses us with a raise. He makes it $125. Let's go. Hopefully, we can get some money back. The small blind now decides to call the $125. Wow. The big blind folds, and the action is now on me. I'm sitting with a hair over $900, so it's a bit of an interesting spot. I think jamming here actually actually isn't bad because it would just look so ambitious and like bluffy just with all the dead money in the middle. But I really just want to get the absolute maximum. So I just decided to make it 375. The cutoff folds and now the button calls the 375. Let's go. Action sound the small blind and you will not believe it. The small blind jams all in for around $1,500. We are getting absolutely blessed out here. Obviously, I'm not going anywhere. I hem and haw for a little bit and obviously make the call. And now the button pretty quickly makes the call as well. Let's go. We're going three ways to a flop where we are all, all in. The main pot is around $2,700. So if I'm able to win this, I will probably have the swingiest session of all time. We table our hands and as no surprise, we're up against 
kings and the button has queens. Are you kidding me? We are in the best shape possible, but going three ways to a flop, you can never be that comfortable. The flop looks good. The flop comes jack high with two hearts. The turn is now another heart, and we do have the ace of hearts. We're off to see a river, hoping to fade the last queen or the last king, and boom, it is a seven of spades. What a clutch triple up for one of the last hands of the session. Wow. At number eight, it's Huggy. He's playing at the Lodge in Austin in a 1-3 cash game, and I don't know. I think everyone's got a big sweat on in this hand. Two hands later, there's two limpers, and we see a raise to $20. The button calls, and we look down at King-6 suited in the small blind. I'm expecting to see some of the limpers call, so I make a pretty loose call and join along here as well. The big blind calls, and both limpers comply with the call too, so we've got six players to the flop. I check dark, and the flop comes 10-4-3 with two hearts, giving us a flush draw. The big blind leads for almost pot, $116. The player behind him goes all in for 180 before the next two players fold. The button cold calls the 180, and now we're in an interesting spot. I check with the dealer to make sure I understand whether this is a dead raise, since that may influence our action. Is that a dead raise or no? Is that one? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just an all in. That's a one better. Yeah, yeah he, he bet 110. That's, that's a dead raise. Yeah. It's a dead raise? Yeah. Like, can he re raise? That's my question. No. No. Knock on no. After some confusion, we find out that we could call here without the original better raising us out of the pot. If the original better calls, which I suspect they will, then we're getting about 3.5 to 1 odds on a call. However, we're only getting about 5 to 1 to hit our flush if we're only seeing one card, but we're getting closer to 2.5 to 1 to hit if we're seeing the full run out. With that in mind, I don't think we can call here, but we could put on the pressure with a raise against the other players in the pot. This could give us the right odds against the all-in player while folding out the other two players involved. And, in the case that either of them does happen to call, I imagine I've got equity as long as I'm not up against an ace high flush draw. With all that, I ultimately decide to come over the top, having everyone else covered. The original better thinks for a full minute before finally making the call, and the button snap calls as well. After a bit of effort by the dealer, we've got an $840 main pot, $522 in the first side pot, and $588 in the second side pot, for a total of $1950 in all three pots. Well, he's got jacks. And he's in these two pots. I had the flush. Oh, he's got the flush. And he's in all the pots. I knew he was in the flush. He's got a set, yeah. so he beats your set. He beats the jacks. You get it cool. all. Wow. So you get all the money. All right. I knew he was in the flush too. How do I not call? At number seven, it's Yale Greenfield. He's playing in a 2-5 at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And how long would you wait before calling the clock? I'm in the 2-5 no limit game now. And I peel two kings and cut off. Under the gun limps. Wait, and I go ahead and make it 25 to go. Button does call. And the small blind and aggressive player off of about a $900 stack makes it $125. Under the gun puts in the cold call. And I think here, when I see this, some alarm bells are going off because a lot of recreational players still do use the under the gun limp strategy with very, very strong hands looking to limp re-raise you. You don't see it as much as you did, say, 10 years ago, but the play is certainly still around. And when he cold calls $125, it makes me think he might have been planning to do that and now he doesn't know what to do, but that his hand is extremely strong. Crazy. But my hand is way too good. I go ahead and raise it up to 525. Button gets out of the way. Small blind gets out of the way. And now it's back on the under the gun player. So he's been in the tank for quite some time here. And he does go ahead and finally put in the call. Flop is Jack 8 3 rainbow. He goes ahead and checks. And I bet $350. Looking at this board, the main types of hands that I think he could have that would ever hit him here are like ace jack suited and pocket jacks. Outside of that, I don't think he's gonna have anything that hits this board too frequently. Of course, he can have hands like pocket tens, pocket queens, ace king suited, and I don't mind if any of those hands call a bet here. If he's got jacks, it just is what it is. We're gonna be in a lot of trouble in this hand and under the gun puts in the call. Turn is a four of hearts. 
So we do not have a heart in hand. So hands like ace, king, and ace, queen of hearts maybe turn to flush draw. Under the gun checks it to us. 1905 in the middle. I think the options are extremely limited here. All in. And I go all in for his 1200 total. And I think the key here is that the way the pre-flop and flop bet is set up, we basically have to shove every single turn with 1,200 behind and 1,900 in the middle. But when he goes to the tank, I'm realizing that I always have the best hand, and that is an incredible feeling. Clock on six. Yeah, 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 no, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. I took plenty of time, don't worry about it. All right, my man, you have 30 seconds, okay? Maybe a 10 second, five second countdown. A lot of the time when the clock gets called, it's just a prelude to somebody folding. 10 seconds. Five. And it's a buzzer beater, he puts in the call. River pairs the four, we show, and he quickly mucks. So we fade what were probably bad cards, Jack, Queen, Ace, and win a huge $4,300 pot here. At six, it's Ashley Sleaf, and she's playing in an $800 tournament at the Venetian in Vegas. And after you've watched the video, make sure you click on the link in the description box to find out exactly why Ashley is playing against her grandmother at the kitchen table. Okay, we're about to get put in a pretty tough spot. I get queens again. <laughs> I open under the gun to 12,000. So the blinds went up to 5K. Folds around to the big blind. She three bets from the big blind. She has not once done this. She's flatted every single big blind. And this is not the only tournament I've played with this lady. I've played with her in a bunch of different tournaments. She three bets to 40K. Alarm bells are going off in my brain, but I have queens. She has about 50 big blinds to start the hand. These are really strong positions. I'm early position and she's the big blind, which people you know, are happy to just flick in the call and go to see a flop. So when she's three betting me from my early position open, I think it's really, really strong. So even though I have queens, I'm a little bit hesitant to just get it in for 50 something bigs. I do make the call and we both see a flop of jack four deuce rainbow. She C bets for 60,000. Big C bet, she bets two thirds the pot. Same situation going on in my head. Now I'm not even beating jacks if she happened to be three betting me with that. So I just make the call, keep my fingers crossed that she gives up basically. Turn is a nine of spades, bringing it back to our flush draw and she snap jams for 207,000, I believe into a pot of 200. So uh, she's so, shown so much strength. It's like aces, kings, and jacks, you know? I mean, what else is she do doing this with? Is she bluffing with ace, king of spades exactly? I don't know the way I've been playing. She has to put me on a good hand. <laughs> so I laid down the queens, gave her a lot of credit. I don't think I was head in this spot. I'm pretty confident in that. At five this week is Rampage, our boy Ethan. He's back at the Hustler in California playing in a 5-5 game. And is there any way to get away from this hand? I pick up aces in the small blind. Oh God, this is what dreams are made of after splashing around. There's an open to $20, then a cutoff three bet to 50. I actually didn't see this raise at the time from the cutoff player, so I decided to four bet, technically, to $80. $80 is still a valid raise, and surprisingly, the opener who opened to $20 makes the call for 80. But now we have some interesting dynamics here as the cutoff raises again, five bets technically to $380. I'm sure I probably induced it as I didn't see this player raise to 50 and there's some weird stuff going on. But with aces here, this is just what dreams are made of. I'm going to make the call for now. I'm going to play out of position, not going to put in the six bet as that seems really strong. The opener folds, so we're going heads up to a pot that's brewing here. Going to a flop of king three deuce rainbow. I check it over to him on a relatively safe flop for aces. He bets out $100, and I've been doing some weird stuff today, so why not do some more weird stuff and have a really good hand? I check raise to $200. Yes, this is a min check raise, $100 more to him, and he has no option besides calling himself. So now we're going to a turn which comes a queen. Not the best card in the world, to be honest, as I do lose to some sets now in a five bet pot technically. Anyways, I still decide to bet out $400, and now 
this player pretty quickly raises to 1500 Oh, man. Well, we're going to be playing for stacks now, I guess. Looking at his stack, he has maybe two to $3,000 behind. And I'm drunk. I'm not folding aces. It's the best one pair. I go all in, and he snap calls. And he shows pocket kings. Oh, that's a gross one here. Really big pot as he had about $4,100 in his stack. The river is a board pairing queen, so no help to me here. And just like that, we lose almost a $9,000 pot in a 5-5 game. Pretty disgusting to run aces into kings. Losing this one, but got to give credit to this player. Nice hand, man. At number four, Brad Owen is at the lodge in Austin playing in a massive $25, $50 No Limit Hold'em cash game. And this is why the seven deuce game only exists at the lodge. Everything's going just fine and we pick up seven deuce offsuit on the button. Boss and Jimmy is raised to 250 from middle position with pocket tens. The seven deuce game is on, meaning if anyone wins with it, everyone at the table has to pay the winner $100. The last person to fold has to pay 200. I call the 250, it's heads up. The flop comes queen four deuce rainbow. We at least have a pair. The opponent checks. I stab at it for 300 to mainly represent a set of deuces since I have card removal for it. I might be able to get some hands with equity to fold, and I may even be able to get a hand like pocket tens to fold if the opponent is super tight. We don't get the fold, Boss and Jimmy is stuck a good chunk and needs to get revenge against me for the jiggities, plus his hand is the best so why would he? He calls, I'm still putting him on something like Broadway cards or a pocket pair that didn't make a set below queens. Unfortunately, we see a turn that's great for both the opponent's range and his actual hand. Oh, oh okay. I told you it was All trouble. Right. Okay, now, now this is confirmed some <laughs> trouble. Three of a kind for Jimmy on the turn. Check, check. Ten on the river! Quads. Quad Four City. of a kind. Quads for Boston, Jimmy. The backdoor quad draw. Wow, this is a very disguised quads. Oh, he checks it over. And Brad's Brad is gonna going for turn it. Turn the duck into a bluff. This is not going to work out well. I actually strongly consider checking back because I still beat all ace highs and hands like king jack suited, but the problem is that I don't beat pocket pairs like jacks, nines, eights, and a few others that the opponent would play this way that he might fold to a river bet with, since I'll have king 10, jack 10, and 10 nine suited hands that I'd also play this way. I certainly don't expect to be up against anything strong once the opponent is checked three times. Particularly after it went check check on the turn, there's no real reason for boss and Jimmy to think that all of a sudden, I'm gonna try to bluff river or we'll be able to call a check raise perfect confluence of events happens for Jimmy to put in the raise to 4200 It makes no sense to me. To be fair, it's not that often that someone backdoors quads. It's even less often that when they do, they check all three streets. I'm extremely suspicious that this is being done with complete air. I already stacked Jimmy once today. Is it possible that he wants to pull a move to teach me a lesson? I ask him to lift up his hands to see if he has enough behind for me to potentially bluff shove. There aren't too many better feelings than when you're holding the nuts and someone asks to see your stack. I'm having a tough time trying to piece this one together. The only hand that I can think of that's reasonable for the opponent to play this way is pocket queens. And even that doesn't seem super likely. There's no need for me to raise unless he turned a hand like pocket eights into a bluff. I'm perplexed and I get an extra 900 from the table if I can bluff catch correctly. With that incentive, I call, it hurts, I run into another monster, I'm still winning for the session but I give most of my profit back to its rightful owner. The seven deuce game has cost me a lot of money this week. It actually accounts for around 80% of my total losses on the trip at the moment. I obviously could have folded on the river there. I just have to try to forget about it, play better, and move on. At number three this week, and Mariano is playing in a 5-10 game at the Morongo Casino in Beaumont, California. And when you're just grateful not to get punched in the face. I get dealt king, queen, and diamonds and raise it up to 75 over a limper. We get a call from the button, the straddler, and the limper, so four ways to a flop of 9-5 deuce with one diamond. Action checks to me, and this is one of the rare situations where I think bluffing into multiple people makes sense. It's unlikely that anyone is too strong on this board, aside from flop sets, and there's a lot of turn cards that can improve my hand, like any diamond, or really any card higher than a 9. So with all that in mind, I continue with a bet of $100, and only the button makes the call. I'm planning on betting again if the turn is good, and oh boy is it good, the 10 of diamonds. So now we have a straight draw and a flush draw, plus it could be a scare card for my opponent if he has a 9. So I bet $500 this time, 
but once again, my opponent makes the call. At this point, I'm starting to get the feeling that we might be walking into a trap, so I'm ready to give it up until the Jack of Hearts comes out of nowhere, giving me the stone cold nuts. Are you kidding me? Okay, so my opponent has around 2300 behind, and I think the play here is to go for glory. I mean, if he was trapping with a set or two pair, he's most likely not folding now. And if he was getting brave with just a nine, he's probably not calling another bet anyway. So after some thought, I announce all in, and my opponent snap calls. All in. Oh. All in and call. Oh my god, Mariano! God damn it! Oh my god, he got there. I turn it over and he shows 8-7 for a smaller straight. Wow. Number two this week is Wolfgang Poker. He's playing at the Palm Beach Kennel Club in West Palm Beach, Florida in a 5-10 game. And with this hand, this really is an example of when losing feels like winning. And I'm having more fun when I look down at pocket aces from the button. As if life couldn't get any better, the $25 straddle is on and the hijack puts in the call. How could it get any better? Oh, I don't know if the cutoff now raises it up to $75 and the action's back over to me. I'm on the button. There's a straddle, a call, a cutoff raise. Obviously, I need to build the size of the pot and get some of these players out of here. So we're not going four ways to a flop. I make it $210. When I make it $210, I only really expect the cutoff to put in the call here, but that's not what happens. Let's see who calls. Oh, the small blind, the big blind, the hijack, and the cutoff all call. How is this even possible? I have aces now in a five-way hand. It's $1,000 in the pot, and the flop comes queen, jack, four, rainbow. I have the benefit of position. I'm on the button, and the small blind now rips it all in for $400. He starts the action. The big blind puts in the call, and the action's back over to me. I really would like to just get out of the way here, but I don't think the small blind is ripping it in too strong. The big blind's call, though, is very strong. So I'm not going to be raising here. I'm also not going to be folding. I put in $480. And let's see what the turn card brings in. Other than an ace, a four of clubs might be the best card for us, counterfeiting any queen jack holdings. But the king of hearts is not that card in the actions on the big blind. He has around $1,600 left in his stack, and I have him covered. And he just decides to rip it all in for $1,600. If he didn't have us beat on the flop, this king of hearts probably brings in any of the draws he was doing this with. Most obvious being 10-9 of hearts or spades. Aces at this point is just a bluff catcher, so I fold it face up. We're going to see the run out in this $2,400 pot. When the river comes the eight of spades, the big blind turns over pocket kings. We had him crushed. How didn't he go for the five bet preflop? I would have just ripped it in and we would have got stacked. His decision to just call my four bet preflop with aces saved me about $1,600, but he's going to take down that $2,500 pot. Feels like a win, though. I saved a bunch of chips. And a number one this week, Close to Broke, is playing in a 2040 game at the Commerce in California. And I don't know, Close to Broke, there probably aren't many of us that are hanging around until the river. We're in the button, and we look down at King Queen Offsuit. Such a great hand to see. I decided to make it $100. It folds over to the big blind who decides to 3-bet to $450. Again, as we mentioned earlier, this is that stronger player that I do perceive to have a pretty strong and very theoretically sound 3-betting range. I'm going to go ahead and make the flat call here considering I am in position, although I will add a small caveat. This hand in the off-suited variety I think plays better as a 4-bet as opposed to a just flat. I'm going to give myself a slight pass because we are playing four or five handed or whatever at this point. So I can only beat myself up so much. So anyways, I decided to make the call and we're off to a flop. That comes ace 10 for rainbow. The opposition, as opposed to the last time, decides to see bet to $300. Obviously, this is a very good flop for his range and he doesn't need to be going massive here. The only thing that he doesn't realize is that I do have some pretty strong equity in this hand. You know, there's a good chance that King High can still be good here. And I am drawing to what is obviously the nuts. There is no flush route there, so I don't have to worry about that. All of my owls are live. So I decided to make the call for $300. And we're going off to a turn card that is a really interesting one as it comes to the Ace of Hearts. It does now introduce a backdoor flush draw into the mix. But what it also does is make it less likely for my opponent to have a hand like an Ace. As now there are two of them accounted for which leaves only two left in the deck somewhere. 
Anyways, my opponent is not stopping the betting shenanigans as he decides to lead out for $450 once again. He's double barreling me with his shotgun and I'm kind of in between. Obviously, King High can still be a very strong hand in this situation. I have the nut no pair in these crossroads. So after a little bit of thinking and considering I still have that gut shot as a back out, I decide to make the call. We're going off to a river that comes an absolute brick as it comes a five. The flush draws don't complete. Nothing really changes here. So when that's the case, I don't really know what to do. And especially when my opponent decides to lead out for, for $1,500. Damn. This is an unbelievably sick spot for me. I'm literally throwing up at my mouth. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you heard me gagging here. And I go deep into the tank. And these are the things that are going through my mind exactly at the table. Do I believe my opponent is capable of going for three streets of thin value with specifically a hand like jacks or queens or kings? And I don't think he is. This is not a board texture that I would be doing that in my opinion. And of course you can, but I think on these runouts, you can only find two streets of value with those holdings. And if that's the case, I just have to discredit that. And it's even more unlikely because I block kings and queens. So now that leaves us with just holdings like any ace X, pocket jacks, and maybe some random 10. And in all likelihood, I just don't see an instance where this guy is going three streets with a 10, pocket jacks, the only hand that makes sense would be an ace. And if that's the case, he's pretty polar here. Although his bet sizing isn't absolutely polar, it's not like he went 2x the size of the pot. I kind of am fumbling with this. The big issue that I'm having with his line here is that he bet the river and he bet all three streets, but he would also be doing this with a bricked flush draw. I'm not holding a flush card. I don't have a heart. And that's really, really important here. I think that if I'm going to be calling this river, I'd prefer not to have a heart. I think I'd be almost always folding if I held even one heart in my hand. Because that just discounts a ton of the combinations of flush draws that he'd have on the turn that he'd continue to barrel with. So after all is said is done and nearly three minutes into the tank, I end up putting my freaking chips in the middle. And I make one of the sickest calls of my life with king high in a massive pot. My opponent ends up showing queen seven offsuit for the absolute three or actually four barrel bluff -a rooney I am very proud to show my king high and wow, what a freaking turn of events. I'm pretty sure I'm not hanging around to the river. That's a nice hand. Well played, close to broke. So that's it for week 11, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, you'll find links to the original content in the description box below. Thanks for watching and good luck at the felt.